now at war. There are but two alternatives, total victory or total defeat. There can be no such thing as a military stalemate that would result in the survival of Hitlerism. That is the opinion of a man who knows. Douglas Miller, for 15 years, commercial attaché to the American Embassy in Berlin. Presenting a radio series entitled, You Can't Do Business with Hitler. Episode 8, The Living Dead. Douglas Miller speaking. Many Americans today are deluding themselves with the idea that we won't have to make any great effort to defeat Hitler, since the people in the occupied countries like Greece and Norway will revolt and thus destroy the Nazi regime. Holding on to this kind of a myth is the kind of thing that loses war. In fact, I feel that this particular myth is deliberately inspired by Nazi propaganda. Let's face facts. Unless we and our allies defeat Hitler's armies, the occupied countries will be under Nazi domination for the next thousand years. Why is a revolt of the conquered peoples impossible? Because Nazi Germany, after years of study, has found out the techniques of keeping them in submission. One important element of the technique is that of the puppet government. Take the Nazi domination of Norway, for example. The Norwegians have resisted Nazi domination vigorously, and yet their efforts have been almost wholly without success. Norwegian resistance reached its peak in September 1940, some months after the German occupation. A significant meeting of the most influential men in Norway was called at Oslo. Gentlemen, the meeting will come to order. Gentlemen, five different political parties are represented here, the five most important of Norway. This meeting is without precedent in our history. The chair is open to motion from the floor. Mr. Chairman, 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 the chair recognizes the gentleman from Sondheim. Mr. Chairman, gentlemen, this is the most important meeting of our lives. We all know why we are here. Not satisfied with taking Norway into protective custody, Nazis are setting up a puppet government. We should do something about it. And who do the Nazis choose as our new chief of state? Quisling. Major Quisling the traitor. Quisling should be taken. There is only one answer to that, gentlemen. Let us forget our differences and stand together. Mr. Chairman, I move that the five political parties here assembled to form a united front, an anti-Quisling front to resist Nazi domination. Here was a determined attempt to fight back. But what happened? Joseph Terboven, the Nazi military commissioner, moved immediately against the United Front, and in a few days... Yes, Terboven, Captain Gunther reporting. Here are your orders, Captain. All Norwegian political parties with the exception of one, have to be dissolved. Destroy headquarters of such parties. Confiscate their records. Arrest all who visit. Very good, sir. This applies to all parties but one? Jawohl. And that one is the Quisling Party, of course. In a few hours, the various headquarters of the United Front parties were occupied by Nazi troops. I believe the records are... Locked in this desk, Captain Gunter. And don't be so careful. Smash it open. Your yeah, wall, Captain. Oh. Oh. There are your records, sir. You see. Yes. Yeah. All the important members of the party are listed here. Right. Now, boys, take this to the chief of police. He will find it very useful. The heads of the Norwegian police were tools of the Nazis. 
With these lists supplied by the Nazis, police chiefs started to rid the police force of so-called undesirables. Officer Jensen, political affiliation, social democrat. Dismissed. Officer Hausenfort, political affiliation, liberal. Dismissed. Officer Hanslein, political affiliation, progressive. Dismissed. Officer Hammerfest, political affiliation, frizzling. Frizzling. Promote him to start. Officer Scheinrath, political affiliation, liberal. Thus, the Nazis have set up a puppet government. All government officials are quizzling. All police officers are quizzling. A special battalion of quizzling soldiers called the Regiment Nordland has been organized and put under the command of German officers. Now, the Nazis dominate Norway with little effort because of Norwegian safety. Most of the German soldiers have been withdrawn and sent to fronts in Russia or Africa. Proof? Here it is. If you want to see these facts in cold print, read Thomas Reveille's book, The Spoils of Europe. Turn to page 73. But Norway is not the only place where the Nazis have created puppet governments. There are traitors at the head of all subjugated countries. In Czechoslovakia. The National Union Party will cooperate fully with the Nazis. In Belgium. The Rexist Party believes in collaboration with a greater right. In Holland. National Socialist Bewegung shall help Holland take its place in the new order. Heil Hitler. In occupied France. Germany recognizes the Bossembemont National Populaire as the only party. In unoccupied France. The Vichy regime recognizes the existence of the new order. In Romania. Iron Guard is ready to stand by the street of life. Puppet government technique is not the only one the Nazis use to keep down the cost. Another and very simple technique is that of starvation. This technique has been frequently used in Poland. In the fall of 1941, at the Warsaw headquarters of Hans Frank, Nazi governor of Poland, an emergency call came through. Headquarters. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, One moment, please, Colonel. Yeah, Governor. What is it? Colonel Lillenberg, they're calling for military zone 7. He says the building of the new road has been delayed because of a strike of Polish laborers. A strike? Incredible. No resistance, sir. They merely refuse to work. Give me the vote. Colonel. Governor 5. What? 9. Of course you can't put them all in prison. That is a military road and it must be completed. Nearly cut off their food supply. Succeed. Certainly it will succeed. It always does. I'll hit them. Quite simple, isn't it? You see, the Nazis control not only the source of food, but all transportation facilities as well. By this method, they could, if they so desired, keep certain countries in subjugation forever without sending in one regiment of German soldiers. Proof? Read Lewis L. Lawwin's book. The Economic Consequences of a Second World War. See chapters 7 and 8. But now let us consider a third Nazi technique of domination. Control of the weapons of warfare. The Nazis today are moving munitions factories from the occupied countries into Germany proper. Munition factories still located in the conquered territories are under Nazi control. No matter how energetically the oppressed people plot to overthrow the conquerors, the problem of securing weapons is a hopeless obstruction. Take France at this moment. For example, in one French city. Who is on the lookout here? Yeah. yeah. Good, good. We can begin now. Jan Zarot. Jan, you will give the report concerning the warehouse raid. Most of what has occurred you know already. Both of us broke into the warehouse with the Rue Chabon. Guns and ammunition were taken. The Nazis discovered us leaving the warehouse. Only eight of us escaped. Of the of the four missing, three were killed. Paul Fobian was wounded. He, he died this morning. As to the result of the raid, we secured 63 rifles, six revolvers, eight boxes of cartridges for the rifles, no cartridges at all for the revolvers. That's the report. Uh, 63 rifles, that's something, please. Yes, yes, but there must be another raid soon. Perhaps Sunday night. It will be as planned before. Now, Pia. Madam Dibble. Thanks. 
promise me no more of such grace. Madame DeVoe, we must have on. The price is too high. For I did in four days. What have we gained? Sixty-three rifles. Why, there are five thousand police in this city, and each is armed with a submachine gun. And not quite ten miles away are two regiments of Nazi soldiers. They have tanks, not rifles. Tanks. But there are underground groups all over France. Now, all of these quits? No, no, not quits, but wait. Wait until the soldiers are forced to withdraw to fight the Russians and the English and Americans. As if that never happens. Oh, then we're lost. To try to fight without equal weapons is suicide. We grow weaker, not stronger. But the day must come when the Germans are pushed on all fronts. Then it's the odds. Then we'll fight and hasten the end. That's all I have to say. You have heard, Madame Devoe. Does anyone disagree? Very well. This then is our last meeting. <laughs> If you want to fully understand how completely the Nazis have disarmed the conquered countries, read Thomas Ternan's France on Berlin Times. See page 58. But the Nazis have one final technique of domination, perhaps the most effective of all. A conquered people will not be permitted to acquire any technical skills or specialized training. They will be permitted to perform only heavy manual labor or routine jobs in mass production industry. In another generation, Knowledge will be the exclusive monopoly of Germany. The Nazis have already put this policy into effect. If the labor gang sent to Germany are men of all nationalities, among them skilled workers and professional men permitted now to do only manual labor. Six years studying medicine at the University of Paris. Look at me now, a ditch digger. Digging in the church. What work? It's hard. Who cares? I was an automobile mechanic in Oslo. Six months more of this, and I'll be fit for nothing else. Don't the Nazis need mechanics? Not Norwegian mechanics. Mechanical knowledge is dangerous. The Nazis make a monopoly of it. They make a monopoly of education, too. So what are you? Czech. Taught history in Prague. Now the Nazis write their own histories, and I dig ditches. You are a Hollander. Yes, and a bookkeeper. And a good bookkeeper. These days, all books are in red ink. And bookkeepers dig ditches. All of us dig ditches. How democratic are the Nazis? Yes, quite. You French fought for democracy and law. We Czechs fought. Our Hollander here and our Norwegian, they fought. All of us fought for democracy. All of us lost. But the Nazis give it to us. They make us all equal. Equal? Yes. Equal. All ditch diggers. In another generation, all knowledge will die out among the conquered peoples, and then, unfortunately, they will be perfectly suited to play the role the Nazis have selected for them, that of slaves. How can slaves revolt? What chance have the occupied countries against their puppet government? What chance without arms? What chance when their food supply may be cut off any time the Nazis will it? Don't elude yourself. No one else is going to win this war for you. You must win it yourself. You have been listening to episode 8, series entitled, You Can't Do Business with Hitler. This series is based upon the experiences and observations of Douglas Miller, who was for 15 years commercial attaché to the American Embassy in Berlin. Listen for the ninth program in this series, which is entitled The Antichrist. This transcribed program, written and directed by Frank Telford, was brought to you by the radio section of the Office for Emergency Management in Washington.